welcome to Dynamics Con. I am Mary Thompson, and I am so honored to be here for the third time in a row. Thank you guys so much for voting me in. It's always such a pleasure and my most favorite event to do every year. Today, we're going to take a look at Power Automate approvals for Business Central. And really what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and break down the barriers walk through things past the template so you can actually customize the solution to really fit your specific needs. Before we get started, um, a little bit more about myself. Like I said, I'm Mary Thompson. I am obsessed with Business Central, Power Automate, and Power Apps. And I get really, really excited when we get to start connecting the two systems together. I'm a Microsoft MVP, and I am also honored to be a Humans of IT ambassador. By day, I am the head of partner engagement at Bam Boom Cloud, which means my job is to help partners quickly resell Business Central. I am also super honored out of all of my accolades to be voted as the two-time Best Dressed Dynamics Con uh, recipient. So really excited about that. You know, speaking of best dress, today you may notice that I'm donating my most favorite superhero persona, the healthcare workers. I wanna take a moment and say thank you from the bottom of my heart to all of our frontline healthcare workers who have been working tirelessly day after day as COVID-19 rages on. My heart really goes out to all of those who have been infected by this pandemic. I'd like to take a moment of silence to honor those who have passed, who continue to fight for their lives every day, and of course, for our heroic healthcare workers who are on the front line. Thank you for your service. Today, I'm so excited about what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna get started with looking at what workflow approvals are. We're gonna take a look at out of the box workflow approvals and power automate approvals. I'm gonna give you some really great setup tips. And then finally, we're gonna get into the demo. So that's gonna be super exciting. All right. Let's talk about what an approval is. And, you know, I'd like to say, I know that probably seems pretty basic to a lot of people. However, it's important to remember that we all come from different backgrounds. So I always like to make sure we're all on the same page and understand the base of what we're doing. With that being said, let me talk about what a business process or a business approval is. Basically in a company, Oftentimes there's going to be maybe a purchase invoice, a credit memo, a big journal transaction, something that's pretty big or financially impacting on the company that can be done by one person, but needs to be approved by another. That's it. That's a approval process. So additionally with that, it's often common that you will have a manager uh, for different departments, right? Maybe you have one for sales and you have one for purchasing and maybe there's different tiers and there as well. And so one person can approve up to one limit and then you need to go to a higher management level. That's called a dynamic approval. And that's really what we're gonna talk about today as well. Um, also in an approval, there's two basic people. You can have more, but you need to have at least somebody that's requesting an approval. And you also need to have an approver. All right. So let's talk a little bit more about these business central um, workflows. On the left-hand side of my screen here, you will see the templates um, that come with business central. There's some pre-generated templates there. Um, and also on the right-hand side, we have the power automate templates. They also have some very nice pre-generated templates as well. I wanna go ahead and say that it's important to note that it is not out of the box versus 
Power Automate. That's not the conversation that I'm trying to have here. Uh, mostly because big, big disclaimer, I know basically nothing about out of the box workflow approvals. I do all of my work in Power Automate. So I actually have no basis to be able to say that one is better than the other because I don't know at all about one of them. Speaking of uh, these out of the box workflow approvals, like I said, this is the screen uh, that you can search for in them and you can create a new template, or I'm sorry, a new workflow, or you can create one from a template and you can copy one. And this is basically all I know about the out of box approvals in, in Business Central. Um, spoiler alert, I do know that you see over here this fun little button that says Power Automate. That's attached to Power Automate. And that allows you to easily create your workflows in Power Automate, but for Business Central. Also, you see here that there's a source. And so here we have just some pre-generated ones. So they're saying that they are from Business Central, but um, if I were to look at this after Flow was created, you would see that there was ones um, stating that the source was Power Automate. So I think that that's pretty cool. Digging a little bit deeper into Power Automate approvals, obviously you see here abbreviated as uh, PA approvals. Um, one thing that I really kind of want to talk about first is I think that they're more friendly for non-functional consultants. If you've been in consulting for a long time and you come from GP or maybe in a vision, then I would imagine that the out-of-box functionality is probably more comfortable for you. For someone like myself who learned Business Central and Power Automate kind of at the same time, the Power Automate structure just made more sense to me. So I think that uh, that goes a long way and, and maybe if one doesn't make sense to you, try looking at the other way. Maybe that'll make more sense. I've already alluded to the fact that there's a really great seamless integration between Business Central and Power Automate. So we'll go ahead and skip into the Teams integration part now. Um, and what I mean by that is I love the approval process because you can approve it either from Outlook or you get a notification right in Teams. Um, so I can improve it from Teams. I have a nice history log inside of Teams. So I think that that's really slick as well. Um, like I also mentioned that there's nice templates that go with the Power Automate as well. And usually that's where people get stuck. Um, also, there's nice custom APIs um, that you can build very easily inside Business Central. And then you can use those and your approvals as well. If I had to say one thing, I think that the hardest part about Power Automate is the lack of documentation. But hopefully here today, we're going to help demystify some of that for you. I've got some quick setup tips. Um, the first one is the approval user setup. So here on this screen, basically you can see that we have an approver and we have a requester. You also have to have one person as an approval administrator, and you can identify if they have unlimited purchasing, you know, approval or whatnot. And then for this person here, um, like basically for Super Susie, her approver ID would need to be Mary Thompson. And that would say that Mary Thompson can approve Super Susie and Mary Thompson is the approval administrator. So if you don't have that set up, whenever you get to production, and you want to share it with other people, you'll get um, error messages that say they don't have the right licensing requirements. So that's, but it has nothing to do with licensing. It's actually just all about this approval user setup. Speaking of licensing, um, I'm not a licensing expert, don't wanna go down that area, but what I do wanna tell you is that you do need to have some type of full business central license. You cannot use the delegated admin license to create business central workflows and Power Automate. You also have to have at least business standard on your M365 licenses because you need to have Outlook and you need to have Teams, again, enable to utilize those, uh, those approval workflows. Also, uh, it's best to have a separate username for just designated for your workflows or your Power Apps. Sometimes maybe a CFO is like, oh, well, we can just share mine. No, I don't recommend that. Um, it sounds good in theory, but it's messy later on. And speaking of that designated username, two things. Um, one, it'll be useful later on for OAuth. And additionally, that username will show up on all approval emails. So be a little bit mindful 
whenever you're naming that. So for example, don't say, you know, like Chuck and finance um, needs, you know, cause that'll show up on everything. Maybe do like automation uh, might be a more sensible scenario there. All right, we have finally gotten to the alluded demo time. Quickly, uh, our use case again is World Max. They've grown in their business, and so they actually have to send all of their invoices through approval for different managers, depending on how much it uh, the invoice is for. So that, of course, means that we're going to be talking about dynamic approvers. As you can see, I've gone ahead and jumped right into Business Central. I've already showed you the approval user setup in the presentation. So real quickly, I'm gonna walk you through the dimensions because everything runs on dimensions in this process, right? So first we have our department and then we just have our dimension values. It's critical that these codes match whatever you're trying to pull in Power Automate. And then finally, you need to make sure that you know that your shortcut dimensions are set up appropriately. And by that, I mean department needs to be one of them. So here we see that is set up and we're good to go. Um, since we're happy there, we're gonna go ahead and I'm going to create a workflow from scratch and we're kind of racing time, so I'm gonna power through this. So first what we're gonna do is it's an automated flow. So I'm gonna skip right through this and I'm gonna jump right to Business Central as my connector here. And you'll notice that we have V3 and regular connectors. You wanna use the V3 connectors because those are the most up-to-date ones and those are the ones that are going to allow you to use your custom connectors. So that's what you wanna use and then just know that the other ones are going to be deprecated. So a lot of times I'll just even get here the V3. So the first one that we're going to look at here is when a purchase document approval is requested. Um, and let me just jump back to Business Central super quick. One thing that I wanna show you here in the this request approval, this is on purchase invoices, it's on sales invoice, it's on a bunch of different things. Anywhere you see this means that there is a Power Automate trigger little technical error there means that there is a trigger here in business, I'm sorry, in Power Automate. So uh, let's go ahead here. So let's just fill in our header information. Um, I'm selecting my environment. And then the next thing that we wanna do is identify that we're looking for the document type of invoice. Now I can further identify more conditions like I don't need to approve anything under a certain amount and by that I would just add these additional header conditions. But in this situation, I don't really care that much so I'm just going to go ahead and move forward. The next one that I wanna look at here again is now that I've created an action, I need to go ahead and get it. So I'm going to use this get record preview v3. Again, it's gonna automatically load my production environment. And so I will enter everything else. Now you see here this API category. So in this situation, I'm going to actually do workflow endpoints. And then for my table name, I'm going to select the fact that it's a purchase document, not to be confused with purchase lines, but just regular purchase documents. Then super important that I grab the row ID and all that's saying is, hey, get the information for the record above here. Now, the other thing I think that's really important to note is renaming these. So I'm gonna say this one is purchase invoice details, and you'll see why in a little bit. Next thing I'm gonna do is create variables. And basically, I just like to think of variables as clean ways to use data. So in the first one that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna call this invoice department and I'm going to identify it as a string. And then I'm gonna use my dynamic content and grab that shortcut dimension that we took a look at. And then I'm going to rename this here and I'm gonna call this invoice department as well. Just keeps things nice and clean and organized and tidy. The next one that we're gonna do is I'm going to initialize a variable for the invoice amount. Again, I'm gonna change this to string and put my dynamic content in here for amount. 
and rename it invoice amount. Great. Okay, so now I've got my two variables. I've created an action. I've got um, my details and I've, I've got my variables. So now we need a table. Now you can create a table anywhere, quite frankly. You could create a custom API and post that table right inside of Business Central. You could post a table in SharePoint. You could, I don't know, create a table anywhere. I happen to choose Excel. I kept it that simple to say that you can honestly just use Excel to create a table in this workflow. So there's a couple key areas. I've got a department. Um, so this is the part that has to be aligned with your dimensions in Business Central. Um, and then there's a min and a max. And what I'm saying is this person, you know, approves through these areas. So basically what we'd say here is like there's nothing being approved under $15 and so on and so forth. And then of course there's the max. And then I've got the email address here. Now you can make this more complicated. Again, I chose to make it super simple. The key thing here is to make sure that your table is formatted as a table. If it's not a table, this flow won't pick it up. You also have to make sure that you either save it on Excel online or like business OneDrive. So that's all I did here. And then when I come into my system back over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say Excel online business. And then I actually want to do list rows present in a table. And then I'm going to map out where it is in here. So as you can see, I'm just dragging and dropping my available things. Oops. And then when I select this file, it's going to say, oh, it sees that I already have that approval table there. And then it's going to identify the only table I have listed in the system. Let me rename this and we'll call this approver, approver table. All right, the super big key here is on this filter query, okay? Because you have to put an OData filter on here to kind of identify, I just want to look at the invoices. I just wanna look at the rows that match the department of the invoice. So that's what we're gonna do here. Um, and what you're gonna do is you have to match the column name. So for here, it's going to be department. So I'll simply go department um, equals, and then from here I'll do invoice. Um, actually, I'm sorry, this is where my variable comes in, right? So my invoice department, and then I'm gonna do another single quote around there. So that will come in here and actually only produce um, or pull the information that's relevant to this invoice. Okay, stay with me. Moving on, what we're going to do next is we actually have to hit a compose because we gotta do little, little power automate magic here. So what we do is we do little compose because then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass through some information. Now the information that we need here is actually this body value item and it's going to do something magical, you'll see. Oh, see, that's what happens. It creates a supply to each. And what that means is then I can use um, and put a condition within the data um, that's inside of the approval table basically is what it comes down to. So um, after we have this area, what we're gonna do now finally is we're actually gonna add a condition. Now in my condition, we're gonna go back and use some of these variables. We're gonna do a couple different things. Um, so I need my minimum amount to be greater than the invoice amount. And also I wanna pull it where, I'm gonna say add row, where the max value is less than the invoice amount. And so what do I mean here? is, hey, it says first line up by here. Okay, we look at 100. So then the invoice has to be higher than this, but lower than the max, right? So it kind of says, which one do I fit in here? So that is what this condition area is from here. Now, continuing on, assuming that, you know, this all works out or that the condition basically is set to true, then we're gonna come in here 
And what I'm actually going to do is I have to do a compose because what we did in all of here, we're, we're saying, hey, what's the email address? But the approval uh, app is a little finicky sometimes. So what we're gonna do is we're taking this email and all that means is it's going to give it a nice clean pass through for the approval app. When I say approval app, I mean this one, okay? So now we're gonna say start and wait for an approval. And from here, you can have a couple different, you know, do you want everyone or do you just want one person and what type of response do you want? I'm gonna be simple, first to respond. Now you see here that this gives me some information or it gives me another field to, to come in here. So this is me creating the um, approval. So, or the approval email. And I'm going to put the vendor invoice number dash, and then let's say buy to name. And all I'm doing here is plugging in some dynamic content, right? So this says invoice approval needed, and then it'll identify the number and the name. Now the assigned to, that was what this whole compose situation was about. Now you see where this says email, where this says compose, and this says approver table. That's why I always change it. It makes it a lot easier to work with. So I'm going to say, okay, put the email that you filtered out down here. This is this is the whole bang for the buck is being able to single out this situation here. So uh, from this details, right, this is just kind of basically like your email body. I'm going to just jump in some stuff that I've got saved over here. And then now this item link is another situation that I want to take you through. So now for advanced viewers, there's, uh, you can use an API, get attachments and kind of get the whole PDF link, but that's for a whole separate session. This one, what we're going to take a look at is just getting a link where it takes us back to that actual invoice inside Business Central. And it's actually really easy to do that. What you do is you come, um, you see here that I'm on the purchase invoice screen and I'm going to copy everything Let's see here, that's left of um, left of this company and Cronus, and then I've got my page 51. So let me come back here. What you do is basically you're gonna take a look at your invoice and here we go. I'm gonna come all the way through here, everything from page 51 in this and. I'm gonna copy and paste this, and then I'm gonna come back into Power Automate, and I'm gonna put this in this link here. And what I'm doing is I'm setting up, you know, some filters, I'm identifying the different things that I want. After 51, I'm gonna say filter. Oops, I don't need that to be caps. I'm gonna do filter. And then I will type in the columns that I'm looking for. So I'm going to say document type and single quote is, right? We did this earlier. Um, again, so we're going to do this invoice. And then we're going to finally do some dynamic content in here. This is what makes this unique. Um, because then when I do this one, I'm going to take the invoice number here. Actually, let me just type in number and single quote again, okay? So this is going to give us a dynamic link back here. And then of course, this link description just is like invoice details on what we're going to do in here. So that's kind of setting all of that up. Um, we're getting really close here. The next thing that I would say is we're gonna actually have to set up another condition, right? Because what happens? Um, somebody's going to approve this. So we're going to put the outcomes right here in this condition. And then in my value, we're going to actually not type. We're going to type in right here and it's going to be approved. So in the situation that somebody approves it, we're going to do a couple different things. We need to pull up our business central actions again. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to execute, execute action V3. So uh, we're going to pull back to Cronus and we're gonna pull up these workflow endpoints again. Now, because I've already set it up above, it now gives me the action to approve it. So what this is going to do is this is going to release it inside Business Central so that it can then be posted and it'll take it from status of pending approval to approved. 
Again, we're gonna add some dynamic content in here and we'll put in this workflow step ID. And so for here, I put like release invoice. Now, if you want to have it automatically post, you can add that step in here. And again, it's gonna be under Business Central. And then it would be execute action V3. But the difference here is when I select my API category, um, I'm gonna hit select V2 instead. And then I'm going to go to the purchase invoice post. And then I'll rename this to post invoice. And then I've got to put the row ID that's associated with the original invoice. So after that, really all I need to do is send an email. Um, to the person that requested the email. Um, and then I can just, sometimes this acts a little finicky. You see how it's acting like this. What you do is you just type in the expression instead of the dynamic content and then type in what you need there. So requested by user email. And then when I click out of it, it'll save to be normal. So don't worry about that. So in this subject, um, I'll just normally put something like um, vendor, oops. Uh, like vendor invoice number, um, you know, approved. So that'll read through like that. And then kind of in the body here, I can say something like this as well. Um, and then put some dynamic content here if I want, right? So put that vendor number back here again. And, you know, of course you could do the same thing here for if it's not approved, then if we take here, we'll do business central. And instead of putting that approved action, what we're gonna do here, right, is we're gonna take these endpoints and we'll look at this reject. So then that's kind of the way that that would be set up. We wouldn't post anything. So we'll go ahead and give this a save and um, go ahead and run it here. Um, actually, let me kick this off from Business Central. So as you can see here, this is open and I'm gonna do request approval and I'm going to hit send approval request. All right, now we see the invoice is processing and we'll go ahead and see what our flow gives us out here in a second. The next thing that we should see actually will be a invoice, ding, ding, see, um, that just came in here. We see a couple different areas actually. Um, I can see that we had this, right? It gives us the information that we said approval needed. It had all of this dynamically connected in there. Now, if we take a look at this link, what it's going to do is it's going to bring us to the invoice inside of Business Central um, that allows essentially the approver to take a look at it. Um, if I come into my apps and I come into Teams, as you can see here, right, this was the screen that we were waiting for it to load. So it's showing that that link that I showed you in Outlook was in fact dynamic. It did bring open the screen here in Business Central. So the person that's trying to approve it can take a look here. And then finally, if I take a look here, um, you can see where I've been doing some testing, right? But there's this requested here. We've got our nice timestamp and it gives me, you know, again, I can take a look at my invoice details here. It takes the link there and then I can either do a follow up or approve. I can add some comments, but I'll go ahead and approve it. So ta-da, now we see that it was approved. And that um, is, sorry, that's actually all I have for today. Um, I was trying to figure out, uh, you know, if I had any other time to show some fun stuff, but it looks like I'm running out of time. And so that's a wrap for me today. I hope that you enjoyed my session. And most importantly, I hope that you sure learned a whole lot. 
I want to give a big thank you as always to all of the amazing, wonderful sponsors that make this truly unique event possible. None of it would be possible without them. And again, just want to say thank you to everyone that makes this event possible. If you'd like to connect, that'd be awesome. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on YouTube. And you can also find me on LinkedIn. Thanks so much. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for joining the show. Hey, Josh, how are you doing? Yeah, very well, thank you. Thanks for having me along, Mary. Yeah, yeah, super excited. Um, I definitely wanted to bring Josh along today. Um, we've kind of met through the community on fun things like YouTube and Twitter and kind of um, shared our passion for dynamic approvals and, and really working together with Power Platform and Business Central. Because I'm sure many of you have noticed that are on this call today, if you start Googling and trying to find a lot of documentation, you're not going to find a lot. So um, this is how Josh and I kind of found each other. So we worked together on, on different things. And I thought it'd be great to have him here today. So with that, let's dive into some of these questions, Josh. Yeah, let's go for it. Which ones do we have left that we want to jump on to first? Let's, we start to answer I'm going to jump into, I think Kristen asked one about the invoice attachments um, first, right? So mm -hmm. let me talk a little bit about that. In On my screen or in my demonstration, we looked at the link, right? And it took us right to Business Central. But wouldn't it be nice if we actually had a copy of the actual invoice, right? So what you can do with that, you can do that. I want to include it in this demo, but we ran out of time. Um, you're going to use like an HTTP call to use the get attachments um, API, uh, just a standard API in Business Central. So what you do is you, you grab that, then you actually have to do a couple saves for it. You, you pull that call the first time. It utilizes the incoming documents um, in Business Central, and then you save that file, and then, then you can kind of put that as, as the link in there. Um, as I'm trying to sit here and explain, I'm realizing I'm not probably doing a great job and it sounds like a great, a great video, uh, for, for that to come up, but I just want you to know that it is possible. And if you're savvy at all with any of the APIs or just kind of looking through that information, it's that get attachments and it's utilizing that incoming document. So you'll use that regular functionality and it, it rolls through really nice. So. Yeah, that's um, that's a right answer. Uh, I think the other one that Chris and actually put in there is to do with vendors and being able to put them on hold. Can we do an approval process for them? And absolutely, we can. So we can access that master data. So I think that we kind of saw as a paid capability document side, we can do with with master data as well. So not just vendors, you can also do it on items and customers as well. So that kind of process where you're describing there, yeah, we could completely go for go, go for that in Power Automate. There is one thing I do, you know, one area where we're speaking about vendors and approvals, it's a little bit interesting. Um, if you've used the out of the box vendor approval, it's really weird. You can put the vendor, uh, like kind of run it through this approval process, but it doesn't actually put the vendor on hold. Um, and so with Power Automate, you can go in there and set up, uh, like whenever you do like your vendor request, then put it the next action in there to automatically go in there and block the vendor, right? So you're going to say execute action and then drop the condition down. So it says block vendor. Then when you get all the way through like the last step of your approval after that vendor has been quote unquote approved. You're going to add in a second action under there that then says to unblock the vendor. Otherwise, they'll go through this whole approval process, but you can actually bypass it, which is really silly. So uh, so that was a fun little trick that we looked around. Let's see here. What else well, please, so go asking ahead. about doing an approval for bank reconciliation. Natively, that one wouldn't be there. But I think there's enough tools in the kit bag to get that one going. Uh, but it would yeah. be a, it would be a custom one essentially. So if we needed a trigger for that inside our business central. We'd have to develop that one to to be in place, probably with a webhook, uh, and then you could have that available to you. Mm. 
That'd be, that would definitely be an interesting one. Now, do you know, I don't know enough, again, I've said before, I don't know enough about the out of the box workflows. Is that a native workflow that you could do out of the box, like an approval for bank reconciliation? No, it, it isn't actually. So a lot of what we see in the connector for Power Automate, Business Central, they're essentially the main uh, ones that we can do workflows for. There's a few kind of like notification type ones that that sit in there, but in terms of approvals, it's very much um, a like for like comparison. You know, I was listening to you, but then I also was just noticing how fun it is that Peppa Pig has come to join Dynamics Con this session as well. <laughs> well, I, I can't upstage you with regards to your outfit, but I do have some props. So my son's little um, stock the set so I can uh, listen to your heartbeat. I could check your reflexes, take your temperature, those sorts of things. Excellent, excellent. Um, you know, kind of thinking a little bit more, thinking on the spot about this bank rec approval and kind of just diving into some power automate approvals in general. You can do a lot out of that general journal style template. So a lot of times in Business Central, you can do one type of action and, and maybe so like vendor invoices or something to that extent or like a payment journal. Um, because at the end of the day, it's a general journal, right? And then it's like a specific type of general journal type or batch type or a batch template. So anytime that you have some type of functionality in Business Central where it's maybe not innately um, a trigger or an action, if you if you kind of put it back down into a general journal and kind of map out that template or that batch, again, just on that trigger for a general journal, like for a general journal approval, hit the on Power Automate, hit the thing that says to show the rest of the lines. And um, there's a batch template that I've done a lot of work where you can manipulate it that way and kind of do things on payment approval. So that may be, I'm just thinking out loud, like on the payment reconciliation journal, it's not quite bank rec, but I don't know if it would set you up somewhere in there, so. Yeah, I mean, using the same tables in the background, but yeah, it's not quite um, quite, quite the same. Yeah. Right. Uh, we have a look at another question. So Amanda uh, has posted one. So are the approvals saved in the history for auditing purposes? Uh, the out of the box has date and time stamps, the users that, that, that conducted it, that kind of thing. That's a good, really good question. So with regards to the audit trail, most of the time, it looks as though it's all being done through one user. So the connection that Mary set up in her demo there was with a particular user who'd set up the flow. So with regards to traffic coming in and out of Business Central, it's largely going to look like it's coming through one user, which auditing wise isn't isn't great. Um, so what one of my blog posts I've done actually might be worthwhile having a look at is to do with with the comments, being able to bring those in. Uh, but then that could also enhance your audit trail capability as well because you'll actually see who did the approval who maybe cancelled something any additional comments that they made against uh, that, that particular document approval in the first place so um, I'll, I'll put the link into the chat and maybe you could you could check that one out yeah there's also and i think maybe that's what you're saying there's the there's actually api links on the back side of power automate um that feeds all of the comments and all of your date history and everything like that where i've seen some people create some really nice power bi dashboards actually that just kind of walk through that history or that audit trail of what was sent for approval and all of your um date and timestamps as well yeah so the, the date is there just in case of rooting for it in some cases yeah. Um, let's see here. So one other question or kind of thing that I, I see when it comes to these power automate approvals, and it was kind of um, alluded to earlier when we, we gave a solution to Michael about, you know, using the HTTP calls. So there is, they're still doing some work. There's um, up from a line level in on some of your connectors. So for example, if you wanted to do an approval for a general journal on a line level instead of a batch level, currently, that line level trigger isn't working. Um, they're doing some work on it. I've talked to the Blaze about it and, and they're working on it. But in the meantime, what you can do is do, do the batch level. And then from there, you can use an HTTP connector. So anytime that you're maybe not comfortable with using the out of the box triggers, you can always use the HTTP like 
um, requests and utilize that with your API calls. Um, and so that's kind of what Josh had alluded to earlier um, as well on, on being able to kind of make some makeshift. So if you get stuck and you're not quite sure and you're like, well, gosh, if I was if I was over in Postman and I could just use a straight API, then I then I would know what I'm doing. You always have that option as well in um, Empower Automate. And sometimes I find that to be really helpful with uh, especially with the Business Central triggers. Yeah, maybe just tagging on to that ever so slightly. If you're using the Business Central connector, you'll probably notice a lot of the time it asks for a, an ID value and it's kind of treating things on a single singular basis. Um, so I'll quite frequently, if I want to work on something in a batch basis, then I'll use just a page from the web services, so just OData, and so I can pull more information, or I'll use the standard API pages, but via the HTTP connector that's in Power Automate, and I can pull more data, and then I can end up using the standard Business Central connector to do some of the actions that I might want to go for, or actually running through um, an, an approval process or something of that nature. Yeah, yeah. Very great, great point. Also, it kind of leads into the fun, when you're using the standard connectors, you can also very easily drop in your custom APIs now. That was mm -hmm. one of the newest um, kind of versions where I was alluding to the V3, make sure you use your V3 connectors. So now that you have those V3 connectors, if you have a custom API that's published inside Business Central, um, you'll, you'll always have like your drop down list, but then you'll also see your custom APIs in there as well. So that new release and functionality is um, really kind of extending the use and in the possibilities of what can be done in Power Automate um, as well. And it speeds time up because you don't have to bother doing a custom connector as a result of that. So it, it's, a, it's a very good feature. I'm glad that's in there. Yeah, it's been super helpful kind of like lining up things. And, you know, honestly, in, in like production level projects where I have Excel, um, as my little table in there. Well, traditionally that's gonna be a, a custom connector, right? You're gonna essentially just put in an extension in a nice table so that it sits within Business Central. But what I did in, our, um, in my session here was to put it in Excel just to show, right, how easy it is. And if you can do it in Excel, think about all the other little different data sources that you could um, put in there. But, but again, a lot of times you could just do a, like a get items or a get information and use that custom API to pull that as well, so. Yeah, and if you think about customers who are on, on Business Central and Microsoft Platform, they probably already have that approval matrix in Excel anyway, so you're kind of speeding things up for them by, by doing that, uh, so yeah, it's yeah. really nice to do. Yeah, well, you know, I thought it was nice because it gives it gives a lot of flexibility too. you know, because kind of speaking, I think somebody's asking about with that business central license um, and the power automate, what do you get? What don't you get your limitations and things like that? Right. So with that business central, um, with your business central license, you get like a shared power automate license as well. Right. And so that actually does give you access to the premium connectors, um, which is nice in that component. And then I think some of the limitations really just goes around like the throttle calls. Um, it was interesting because Josh and I were kind of, uh, in case you didn't know, there's a lot of background work that goes on while we're having the live chat. We're secretly trying to find answers for other questions that you're asking. So we're like, hey, the throttle calls. Well, I had my information as like 300 calls per minute per user, but Josh had listed, what was it, 10,000? 10, 10,000 per 24 hours per user. So I don't know, maybe if you do out the math, it comes out to be the same, but I just, I was like, oh, well, that, that's weird because I see that you got your information from some Microsoft documents and I was Googling mine the other day too. So uh, so there's there's some calls, uh, I guess I, I literally, I don't, I don't know the math, maybe somebody else has it, but uh, so 10K a day. That's what Sean was just saying is that it is 10,000 calls a day. So for a lot of projects, it's just fine. But I think that if you were trying to set it up for like super heavy, like e-commerce action or something like that, right, then then maybe you're going to reach those uh, 10,000 10, calls a, a day limit. But um, I haven't seen that on a project yet personally. <laughs> also worth thinking about what is the API call within that flow. So anytime you use a, a connection to either to, to Business Central, to the approvals area, you add, you add some variables in there, you add a condition, 
these all constitute as API calls. So you can quite easily, once you've devised your flow, calculate how much that could end up be, being as, as a single run, and then multiply that out depending on what your, your basis might be. So if you're a, a business that's using it for document approvals for purchase side, you might only get 3,000 in, uh, invoices a year, in which case it's probably never going to be a problem. Great. Um, I was just trying to look here. I'm not sure. I think, did we answer all of our questions? Anyone else have any questions? I know we're kind of getting close on, on time here. Um, almost as many calls as I get a day about my extended car warranty. Sean, Sean's having comedian hours. So if you don't want to talk about Power Power Automator or Business Central in the live chat, apparently you should join Sean for his uh, live stand-up comedy show. It'd be great. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, other than that, I hope you guys just really enjoyed today's session and learned a lot. I know that there were some comments that I went fast and I apologize. I'll try to work on that in the future. Maybe you can use the uh, play it back at a slower space or pace um, and lots of pauses, but at least it's here. And of course you can always reach out to either Josh or myself if you have you know any additional questions as well. <laughs> so, um, Josh, do you have anything else to add? Oh, I'll, uh, what I will do is I'll put my Twitter handle into the chat window so people do have bits and pieces they want to catch up on later then uh, by all means yeah yeah and and you should because josh is brilliant when it comes to the dynamic approval stuff that's i purposely i was googling i found his stuff it was brilliant i stalked him not really but i was like hey uh you know so so definitely check out his blogs they're really really awesome they're really helpful and uh i think you'll find them very useful so Anyways, with that, we will bid y'all adieu and thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed the rest of Dynamics Come. And once again, thanks to all the sponsors that make this all happen. Mm -hmm.